Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. How are you doing, everybody? Inshallah, you're all well and good health. I'm very excited today uh, to be here with you in another podcast with my brother, Smee Chal, all the way from Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you doing? Wa alaikum salam, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum to all the ones that are watching. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Very good. It's what time is it over there? Over here. It's uh, 7, 7.45. We're here, 7.45 in the morning. 7.45, yeah, mashallah. <laughs> I spoke to you uh, like an hour ago or so, about an yeah. hour, and so it was time for Fajr for you. Mashallah, I had to pray yeah. for me before we could start this. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. very excited Alhamdulillah. for tonight's podcast, inshallah. Uh, if you guys can hear us in the chat, just give us a thumbs up, inshallah, just to make sure that you guys, uh, you guys can hear us so we can get going, inshallah. And uh, welcome to all our viewers. All the brothers and sisters in the chat, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Um, so, Brother Smith, yep. we met how long ago now? About a mm, couple of weeks? I think two weeks. Yeah, two weeks, three weeks. SubhanAllah, yeah. So, I met Brother Smith, it was just over uh, one of the podcasts. He actually was one of the callers, and we kept in touch. We did uh, that. Uh, Think for your Dawa project in Malaysia. Yeah, you want to tell us a little bit about it before we get started. Yeah, so what we, so what I'm uh, trying to do over here in Malaysia is that uh, I'm training the youth to uh, perform Dawa and to uh, argue in um, using logic and reasoning to prove uh, the trueness of Islam, comparing with the other the other religions. So inshallah, I called the I called brother up um, <clears throat> to uh, ask uh, some questions. It was very good, alhamdulillah. Um, and yeah, um, the, uh, the 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 brothers and sisters over here they're getting better. They're getting better. Uh, they have uh, built some uh, confidence, you know, to in, in yourself. And um, yesterday, actually, one of the guys uh, he went out and he uh, approached someone. Oh, just by the road, <laughs> randomly, randomly, just approach someone and start and, and ask him, "Have you have you heard about Islam? Can I tell you about Islam? Is it okay?" Oh, mashallah! I, I would I I, I I I couldn't have done that. <laughs> I couldn't have done that. Subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> then he started talking. Alhamdulillah, that was good. Yeah, and uh, and, and and it was it was from uh, it was from your show. Afi. He 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 built his confidence from your show. Alhamdulillah. Astaghfirullah, my Allah. Except for Muslim from you, we all scratching the surface and learning. But like I was saying, I'm very excited here to be your brother. Let's meet, inshallah. Uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a very productive, beneficial, and fruitful conversation. Uh, we'll do this for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, my first contact with anybody from uh, Sikh background was in med school. Obviously. <laughs> anybody surprised? <laughs> no. Mashallah, there's a lot of. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, seem to have seem to be. To be honest, very um, family oriented people. Uh, very respectful, very very respectful people. Um, you know, they're they're into uh, the idea of being uh, joining professional schools, law school, medical school, pharmacy school, dental school. I guess maybe this is why I met them through med school. Um, you know, they have good things to say about Islam. Uh, nothing really negative. I mean, first time I heard anything negative from a Sikh person was really watching Speaker's Corner. <laughs> but again, Speaker's right. Corner, you the weirdest things in there. You made the weirdest, I mean, good people and weird people. Yeah, I, but, think, I guess it was Jack Raj, right? Jack Raj. Yeah, is that the gentleman with, um, what's he called? Sikh Basic or something? He has, yeah, uh, Basics of Sikh. Yeah, basic of Sikh. Yeah. Brother, actually, Brother One contacted me and suggested that I ask you that, which I will be, inshallah, asking you later. But uh, like I said, uh, nothing really negative to say about Islam. As a matter of fact, I used to hear from some people that Sikhism, I mean, I know this is probably like a misrepresentation to Sikh for whoever is watching out there, but I used to hear that Sikhism is a mixture of Hinduism and Islam. Have you heard that? Have you ever heard that before? It is true. It's a mixture of Hinduism and Islam. It is true. Oh, it is true. So, so bro, bro, is. how about we get started, inshallah, Rahim, by give us a little introduction for yourself. And from yep. there, we move on to the basics of Sikhism before we ask you about your journey to Islam. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, ala rasulullah. Uh, yeah, 
So I, I, I'm Hasmeet, I'm living in Malaysia. Uh, I accepted Islam when I was 17. 17, so it's been 19 years. So Alhamdulillah. Uh, and yeah, so when I accepted Islam, it was not, uh, nothing miracle to, 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 to say that I witnessed anything miracle. But um, I did a research. Uh, into Sikhism, I did research into Christianity, I did research into Islam. Uh, and after looking at all the other religions and their belief, uh, it was very clear to me that only Islam made the most sense in terms of uh, truth, in terms of uh, uh, God and who is God and how uh, God represents himself. And... <clears throat> I accepted Islam immediately after that. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. So, 17-year-old. Uh, wow, this is very impressive. I actually want to hear more about this. So, so we have a young man here, 17-year-old in Malaysia. Uh, what happened? You were in high school, I'm assuming, at that time? or? Yeah. So, so uh, <clears throat> before, uh, before that, I was a... Uh, I wouldn't say I was a bad guy. Like I wasn't, I wasn't murdering or, or killing or anything like that. But um, so I was indulged in um, alcoholism, you know, uh, and uh, I used to be a rhythm guitarist and a uh, vocalist in, in, in my school. So pretty popular with the girls <laughs> and all that uh, and um, smoking, all kind of stuff, you know, teenagers, basic things, right? <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, it was from there. And uh, one of our, my biggest influence was people like Metallica, Guns N' Roses. Uh, I, I followed their, their, their biography, tried to be like them, right? And now, yeah. Alhamdulillah, my the people that I want to follow is uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, Omar, Khalid bin Walid. I'm actually studying about Khalid bin Walid. I'm very impressed by him, the sort of Allah. I gotta connect you, boy. I gotta, I gotta connect you with Brother Anas for that. But keep going. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah, inshallah. Yeah, I love, I love, I love, I love the whole thing. The, 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 the whole story about Islam, how it came down, and uh, how the Prophet uh, uh, spread Islam, and things that he he uh, went through. It's all so beautiful. It's also beautiful. Um, what got you into yeah. this, though, Akhi? What got you? Why is a Sikh, seventeen-year-old, sixteen-year-old, fifteen-year-old, bad boy, not bad guy? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, high school students. You know, obviously, you were not practicing Sikh. I'm assuming, right? No, no, I wasn't. Yeah, I so, wasn't. You, so you didn't have like the hair, you know, the turban. You kept no. the uh, the. Uh, I think they kept also like a, a knife or, or something, right? Yeah, yeah, small knife. It's called karpan. Karpan. So you didn't you didn't keep those? I'm gonna call them commandments. No. You didn't have those, yeah. So you basically no. were like, you know, just having fun. So why, why, why look into Islam out of all things? Like, yeah, you a contact so, with someone. Uh, yeah. So uh, no, not really a contact. Um, so uh, uh, although I wasn't uh, practicing Sikhism, but I was, I was reading the the, the the holy scripture, which is called the Guru Granth Sahib, right? And when I was reading that, uh, there's many uh, verses that, that talks about Allah. Directly in, in, talks in Sikhism? Allah. In Sikhism, yeah. Oh, in I Sikhism, can't wait to hear about this. Yeah, it talks about Allah. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a, uh, in the beginning where Guru Nanak, who's the first guru, the founder of Sikhism, he said, if you want to taste the sweetness of, of, of truth, if you want to taste the sweetness of God, then follow the prophet of Islam. Wow. Right? This is, which, which one is this? Uh, this Guru is uh, Guru, Guru Nanak, the first guru. Yeah. Uh, okay, I shared with you uh, uh, yeah. a piece of... Yeah, can you pull that up, inshallah? Sure, no, inshallah. Definitely. Wow, this is amazing. To be honest, because I did hear these things before. But again, I've never given it its right you know, to study it. So I never really had a uh, proper understanding of what's going on about it. But I kind of did hear these things. It's amazing. Um, Bismillah. It's amazing. Application window. I think this is it. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So 
this is part of the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, part of it, right? Uh, and if you want to go for the reference, you can see below the reference. Uh, so uh, Guru Arjun Dev, that's the, the person who, write, who wrote this. That's the fifth Guru, Guru Arjun Dev. Uh, and then they've got uh, uh, 1136. That is the, uh, the verse that's been written. That's how you find this. So look at what Guru Arjun Dev says. So Guru Arjun Dev, who's Guru Arjun Dev? He's one of the uh, very significant uh, gurus in Sikhism because he was the one who built the uh, golden temple in India, which is the holiest place for uh, Sikhism. It's the, quote unquote, uh, Kaaba for Sikhism, right? In, in Punjab. In, in Punjab, correct, yeah. Uh, so you see what he says here, and it's, and it's very clear, he says, the one Lord, the Lord of the world, is my God, Allah. Okay? Wow. Notice, notice one thing, Afi. In Sikhism, Allah, the word Allah, is not referred as a word to describe God. It's a name of God. Mm. Like in Islam, we say ilah, ilah, right? Allah. This is the same thing that, 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 that the Sikhs hold as well, the ilah. Not like the Christians or, or the others uh, where they say Allah is just a, a, a name, a generic name, right? In Sikhism, no, Allah means God. And that's why you can see it's so significant. He says, the one Lord, the Lord of the world is my God. The Guru is claiming my God. Subhanallah. Allah. Right? Okay, so, so Rahi, the, are, you, yeah. are you telling us right now in Sikhism that yep. uh, as a Sikh, Sikh people believe that, or in their scripture, that God is Allah? Yes. Yes, they do. They wow. believe that God is Allah. <laughs> wow. yeah, ladies yes. and gentlemen, brother sister, this is coming from the mouth of someone who actually grew up in a Sikh family for 17 years before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided him to Islam. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Okay. I'm so excited to hear this. Yes. So uh you see that, and then uh below uh you you'll see all the other the other things. The primal Lord God is called Allah, right? can see it, 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 it is very clear that they believe that the one God is Allah. Uh, they also believe in Tawhid, right? That God, uh, that uh, Allah has no form. Uh, we, we can't imagine how Allah is. Uh, we hold from the Quran, Laisa mm Kamati -hmm. Shaykh. They also hold the same thing, Laisa right? Kamati Shaykh, right? That they, we cannot, there's no way to imagine him. We can't imagine him. It is beyond our imagination, right? They hold the same thing. But they also believe that God resides in everything. God is in everyone and God is in everything. So pantheism, uh, if you would. Yeah, yeah. There's this word, uh, it's the, the Sufism. This, this, this is an influence by uh, Islamic <laughs> Sufism. Wahdatul Wujud, yes. Wahdatul Wujud, yeah. Where you, uh, you know, if you are good enough and you practice enough, you you you, you become one with God. Mm. That kind of uh, belief. So when I was reading this, I said, no way. This 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 this, this doesn't seem right. I just, I just want to go on the record and say uh, that that the, I'm saying this. I'm not claiming that uh, Sikhism is, uh, is wrong, is bad or anything. This is what I went through, my personal journey, right? When I was reading this, I said, no, this, this can't be right. right? God being in, in everything and, and we as mere human beings who are uh, not perfect, who's always in one way or another uh, doing things or doing something wrong, that we can actually be one in essence with God. No way, this can't happen, right? So it was here that, 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 that I, I picked up the Quran and I started reading the Quran. Uh, I read Surah Al-Baqarah at the time and uh, amazingly, I opened to the page. I didn't start from the first. I just opened to one page and I was reading it and, and in that page it's, uh, it says Allah was saying that Allah guides who he, who he wills 
And for the ones that he doesn't want to guide, will never get guidance. For Allah will close their eyes, their ears, and uh, and uh, keep them away from the truth. And they will never be successful. Alhamdulillah. So when I read this, it was it was it was it was very. Uh, it drew me very, very, very close to Islam, and I wanted to know more, because you don't find this kind of uh, proclamations in uh, uh, any other religion. Uh, in, in Sikhism, I see you don't you don't find this um, Allah telling them this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do it, okay, uh, and then sending down uh, a prophet, and then this and that and this and that, uh, which is everything is so detailed. The similarities. In Islam and Sikhism is, okay, Islam, we believe that Allah sent down the Quran, his words, directly to uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, we know that it was uh, through Jibreel alayhi salam. Now, the Sikhs, they make the same claim that the Guru Granth Sahib was uh, sent down directly from God to the ten Gurus. But when we look at the Guru Granth Sahib, uh, we have other people who also wrote in there. Like, for example, the first Guru, Guru Nanak, his close friend, his companion who uh, moved around with him, his name is Mardana, was Mardana, and he was a Muslim. Oh, okay. okay. He was a Muslim. And he wrote as well in the Guru Granth Sahib. He wrote as well in the Guru Granth Sahib. So you have the Muslim people writing in the Guru Granth Sahib. You have the Hindus writing in the Guru Granth Sahib. And you have the 10 Gurus writing in the Guru Granth Sahib. So uh, for me, it was just confusing when they say that uh, it came directly from God. Because when I look at Islam, you just deal with one person. You don't deal with anyone else. You just deal with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and God. That's it. Right. Well, but That's all. This is an undeniable fact that Muslim has definitely influenced Sikhism. It's an undeniable fact. Yes. Not even not even yes. Sikhs themselves can say that's not true. Or like, oh, that's just some somebody wrote that. This is a known fact in Sikhism that Islam has influenced uh, the religion. Is that correct to say? Yes, that's definitely correct. I think. Yeah. Definitely One of the brothers, Blazing Heat, mentioned earlier that they were affected a lot by Ibn Arabi, and I believe that's true. He was a big, uh, uh, you know, into this stuff of. Wujud and wujud and all that stuff. Of course, yeah. you know, we don't believe in this. This is not our position. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know, outside of his creation, but that's a different topic that we can talk about yep. some other time, inshallah. And we don't believe that God is everywhere because uh, I remember one time I was watching uh, some time back, a few months ago, one of the brothers, Brother Shamsi actually, in the speaker's corner. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 And I think he asked one guy this question. He's like, what do you mean that God is everywhere? <laughs> The guy's like, yeah, okay. everywhere. <laughs> uh, I hate to say this example, but we, I guess he used it just to show the ridiculousness of the claim. He goes to him, is God in this bottle? Is, is God <laughs> okay. in, my, in my shoe? Is God in the bathroom? Is God, is God in hellfire? You know, and then you find mm -hmm. And then you see the other people that, you know, they just like, uh, okay, I never thought about this. You know, subhanAllah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Correct. Uh, right. True, true. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Okay. And now, okay. So, mm. based on what you're saying, yeah. So the main guy in Sikhism, he said his name is what again? Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak. Is that Guru Sahib Nanak? Is it the same same? Yeah, the same guy. Guru Nanak. So Guru is 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 teacher. Is teacher. Yeah, yeah. So his right. name is is uh, Nanak. Right. Yeah. His name so, is and Nanak. Then, and he had some other people writing as well. Which he called he called yes. disciples or whatever you want to call them in, in that sense. Yeah, we yeah, are disciples. Mardana, yeah, or, or because. Or yeah, so in Sikhism, the ten gurus is known as their prophets. So they're prophets. Do they receive? Do they believe that they receive revelation from God as well? Yes, yes. They, 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 they believe of sect that they receive uh, revelation from God. Now and they these, hold the book. Yeah. These Go people ahead. claim. This, these people claim such because uh, this is a huge claim for someone. Yeah. It's like Poland Christianity, for example. Uh, so is this? Do these people in their writings claim mm -hmm. that what they write is an inspiration from God? Or is it that later on people wrote about them and said, no, these people, they must have received the from God? Which yeah. one is it? So, so the Guru Granth Sahib is written directly from uh, the Guru Nanak and all the other 10 Gurus, not uh, someone else writing about them. 
these are the gurus themselves who are writing. Okay. Uh, but you can see, you can see from the writing itself, which, uh, which uh, I showed uh, all the brothers here earlier, they didn't claim themselves that they were receiving revelation from God directly. So they didn't claim that. Right? Uh, you didn't they didn't claim, they, did, they, they didn't say that uh, we are receiving uh, revelation from God. Okay, they didn't claim that. And, and whenever they talk about God, they talk about God as a separate uh, being from them. Hmm. Right? And throughout time, today, today in 2021, Sikhism actually starts to believe that uh, Guru Nanak was God incarnate. And oh, so they are now, yeah, now they are becoming, to, they, they, they're becoming like the Christians. <laughs> now they're becoming like the Christians. Uh, they believe that uh, all uh, all the ten gurus were God, and uh, they were uh, God was jumping from one to the other, right? Yeah, this is the problem. Years ago, no. Yeah. Okay, this is the problem with pantheism. I'm noticing the problem with pantheism mm -hmm. is that once you allow this idea, this is why Islam, alhamdulillah, we're very clear about you know aqidah. We don't play around with these things. We don't. Yeah. True. This idea when you open up these kind of worms now. God is everywhere. God, then you can. Then you can't. How could you stop someone from saying, "Well, God is in me"? Yes, correct. And now somebody comes to you. I'm God incarnate, and we find this mm -hmm. uh, also in 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 Qadianism, You know, um, brother, uh, the brothers, mashallah, Abdul uh, Razak and brother one doing wonderful mm. stuff. With them. And uh, that there are some. At times where he said they had dreams about God and he is God and things like that, subhanallah. Allah, <laughs> exactly. I'm not an expert well, in that field, but, but uh, it's very it's amazing, Akhi. So now you're saying that these people back yeah, to the Prophet Muhammad, you know, one of the brothers mentioned oh, that in the comments. He said this the fact that they believed that the Prophet Muhammad was a prophet, the fact yeah. that they didn't follow him, that doesn't doesn't make them a haq, obviously. Now, what mm. is the position of an average Sikh, an average educated Sikh, an educated about their religion, you know, mm. when you tell them that, look, you know, the founder of the religion that you you, you follow actually yeah. believed that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a prophet. Now, this yeah. gives you two options. You're either going to follow this prophet or you're going to mm. disobey what he brought from Allah. What is an, what, what answer would you get from people when you, when you talk to them about these things, for example? Okay, so the position that the sixth hole is that the Quran is corrupted so oh. you can't trust it fully right and that the guru grand side is the full and uh, the, the proper revelation from god so although mama wasalam, was the prophet but uh, there was other prophet that came after him to the six uh, which is guru nanak and that is the prophet that all mankind needs to follow so this is the position and this is what they will tell you right <clears throat> But do they even mention the Prophet Muhammad in their prayers, you know, in their festivals, yes. in their holidays? They do? Uh, in their prayers, no. In their prayers, no. Uh, but like I said, uh, Guru Nanak himself mentions that if you want to taste the sweetness of truth, then follow the Prophet of Islam. He but the Prophet of Islam said, La nabiya ba'di. There's no other Prophet after me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's true. So uh, you can see the, that that they, they have they have come up with their own ideas to say that uh, uh, the, the Quran was uh, corrupted and then uh, Guru Granth Sahib is the full revelation and the truth and uh, after that uh, the ten gurus came down as the prophets and the reason that this happens is because they are not educated uh, they're ignorant about the Quran itself and the life of Islam but when you look at, at the teachings uh, the, the, the practices of, of the Sikh Okay, they pray five times a day. What? They, yes. And they follow the same time. They follow the oh, same time. Fajr, you gotta be kidding Zuhur, me. Asar, Wallahi, Wallahi, right? Maghrib, Isha. They follow the same time. Okay? And the way of praying, they stand. Okay? And uh, so they don't have rokok. They don't have, they, they have sujud. They prostrate. Right? Right? So it's a uh, two rokaan. They prostrate two times, and then the, the, the prayers finish. Two sajda, inshallah. Yeah, two sajda. 
So it's very similar to, to, to the, the closeness between Sikhism and Islam is so close, so close that when you look at it, you just say like, wow. So a message to Unitarian Christians out there. You have a competition. Mm -hmm. You were close to Islam. Now we're finding out that there's another religion that is very close to Islam, which is Sikhism. So yeah. Sikhism, debate with Unitarians, and the loser and the winner, we invite you to come to the Haq, inshallah. Continue, continue, yeah. mashallah. So now you're saying they believe in Allah. Okay, another question. An average yeah. Sikh out there, mm. if you yeah. ask him, do you believe in Allah? What answer would you get? They believe. They will say yes. <laughs> there, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that they believe. Yeah, there's, there's no, no doubt that they believe that. in Allah. Yeah, so there's no doubt that they believe Allah. in Allah. And do they mm. believe that Allah is one? Yes. The only difference yes. is that that uh, this idea of wahdat uh, uh, unity of existence, or however, however you want to translate it, it's a it's a deep you know philosophical thing, but it has to do with pantheism, right? That everything yeah. is together, we're all one, you know. And this idea of like God is everywhere. So this is. So would you say that if pantheism, which clearly comes, with, I would I would think, come from Hinduism part, since we're saying that Sikhism yeah. affected both both Hinduism and Islam, yeah. I would assume that uh, this idea of pantheism was affected either by some people like Ibn Arabi and others, as well as also from from Hinduism, since they believe in this idea, this concept of pantheism. Would you say that yeah. if this idea of pantheism was taken out from Sikhism, w would they be a step closer to Islam even? or um... Yes. If this idea was taken out, they would definitely be Islam. Not a step closer, they would be Muslims. Mm. Right? Uh, and I just want to clear one claim uh, that uh, some time ago, Dr. Zakir Naik, he said that uh, Guru Nanak uh, was a Muslim. Now, this is, uh, this, is, this, this, this is not true. Simply because Guru Nanak, he taught in reincarnation and mm. this goes against Islam, mm. right? So if he's teaching uh, reincarnation, he could not have been Islam. But of course, we don't know what happened in his last breath. He could have just said the Shahada. Uh, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Allah, yeah. Allah knows. Interesting you saying that. Now, the more you're talking about this topic and I'm thinking about, you know, Qadianism, right? Mm. So they have someone who came after who believes in the reincarnation because he believes that he's Jesus reincarnate and he is also the Mahdi and he's also the uh, another prophet or whatever. And uh, again, it came also one of the Eastern religions, obviously, right? Yeah. And subhanAllah, and he also believes in the Prophet Muhammad and Allah. Very interesting. Of course, I wouldn't put, uh, you know, Qadianism and, uh, and Sikhism in the same platform, uh, obviously, for many reasons. Uh, but uh, I could see a little bit of similarities and a little bit of, you know, effect that happened at the time. How old is the uh, religion of Sikhism, Akhi? Um, I would say about 450 years. Right. This is, it's, 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 it's new. It's very new. It's, uh, it's not even history. Yeah. So 150 years. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you the truth, man. I have some really good, like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say, memories or, or I guess just experience with mm -hmm. Sikh people. Especially during yeah. Medical, I remember very, very nice people I met. Um, and, uh, you know, we never really talked about religion. They never really, like, uh, you know, wanted to talk about it. It's all. It's almost yeah. seems like they're accepting. They're like, yes, we believe that. Everything is true. Whatever you say is true. Like, it's yeah. true. It's okay. You can believe that. You can be that too, as long as you have this. It's almost like a, I don't want to say Christian uh, way of, like, um, saying that... Uh, it's not true because Christian believe like if you don't believe in Jesus as your salvation, you're pretty much doomed to hell. At least yeah. that's the orthodox belief. But but they do have this language of like it's all love, it's all you know, as long as you're happy, as long as but I wouldn't classify this as real Christian teachings. This is more like what common average Christian person would say, you know. No, it's okay as yeah. long as you have love. It's like we don't teach love. It's like we don't of course we teach love, we just love every day. This is what we do. <laughs> like this is what we're talking yes, about. Right. With our families, yeah. with our you know. Subhanallah, but they focus on this like it doesn't matter what you are as long as. So this is what I noticed with with the this, at least the people that I met, very nice and all, but they don't they really don't want to get into the meat and potato of the topic. You know, like let's talk about God. What is your revelation? Um, what about their books? Do they have like a book, for example, uh, like a, a one holy book or like a set of books? 
Uh, so they have uh, two books, and the, the, the main holy book is called Guru Granth Sahib, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the verse that I, we, we, I showed you earlier. Uh, the other is by the 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, which is called the Adi Granth. Mm. So they have two holy books, uh, the main one being uh, Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, this is the books where they make the claim, the words came uh, directly from God and inspired the gurus to uh, write. But uh, once again, making it clear, the gurus did not claim that they were inspired by God while they were writing. So these are claims of other people. Oh, that okay. That's, that was my next question. So these are people after that say that. They themselves never yeah. really claimed anything. They didn't claim it. Yeah. They now, if you ask these people, what is, what is the evidence, this, these writers... That mm -hmm. these early gurus were uh, receiving some sort of wahi, some sort of inspiration, mm -hmm. revelation mm -hmm. from God. What, what is mm -hmm. their answer if you ask them that? What is the evidence, for example? Let's say I'm investigating Sikhism. I'm investigating Sikhism right now, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Beautiful what you're saying so far. I have a couple of questions. Where is the evidence that these people received revelations? Did they claim so? You're saying that they, ha they have a claim that? No, they never claimed that. The gurus never claimed that. So where is this coming from? This is coming from later belief. Right. Like they what is, what is yeah. their what is that how do they substantiate such claim? Now they don't have claims like uh like in Islam. They don't have claims like in Islam. They just uh, it's it's just being taught uh you know by the forefathers uh word of mouth, you know, uh, saying this uh, like Christianity, uh you know, uh belief in Jesus or your salvation or, or you will not have salvation. And it's just word of mouth. And then through, throughout, the, uh, throughout the, the years, people just accept it and, and move on. We just accept it and move on. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I accepted Islam. Because when I look at the life of, uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu and I compare it with uh, Guru Nanak, I see the difference. We don't have here uh, Guru Nanak claiming that he received revelation or anything like that. But... Uh, the Prophet of Islam, he claims that he is the Prophet of Islam and he's receiving revelation. And we can see his lifestyle, right? He was married to uh, one of the richest women uh, in Makkah. His uh, family was the custodian of the Kaaba, right? So it doesn't make sense that someone with such high uh, esteem and respect would leave all that to be prosecuted, to be chased out of his, of his own uh, place. So when I study more into the uh, the, the teachings of this um, of Islam, I find that Islam makes very 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 much sense to other to other religions because Islam teaches you uh, logic. I always say this: Islam is a religion for intellectual people. Yes. That's that's like my logo out there. I, 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 we couldn't find anything, you know. Uh, this is not about me; it's about you. But in parentheses, there isn't anything that made more sense to me than Islam. And, I, and wallahi, I say this with the most uh, non-biased tone out there. It's just, it's just, there isn't. Like you said, for example, about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, think about this: all these hateful missionaries. We're not saying that every missionary is hateful. We're not saying yep. it's hateful. Of course not. We have Christian friends. We have Unitarian Christian, uh, one of our great greatest friends in the channel here. We have so many other Christians that come in. We talk. We have a conversation with. Of course, we're not generalizing. Absolutely not. We're not saying that. Yep. But we're talking about people like Jay Smith and some others, who's mm, obsessed yeah. with the idea. Mecca is not in Mecca. <laughs> Mecca. <is not. laughs> I mean, this guy got a PhD and now he's obsessed with Mecca. All his videos. This is embarrassing. But anyway, Subhanallah. To these people, it just doesn't make sense because. Your claim is that, general speaking, that the Prophet was lying or copied your books. But then, like you said, if you think about this, why? You always have to give a motive. What is the reason? Why? Give us something. Because he was from the nobles. He was from Banu Hashim, Quraysh, Mecca. You know? Yep. Uh, they were custodians of the Kaaba. He was married to one of the wealthiest women. Right? Um, yep. He, even when he started his da'wah, when he started Revelation, they told him, We'll make you our king. We'll give you anything yeah. you want. You pick it. Any wife, any as much wealth as you want. Just let go of this message. I mean, yeah. anybody after the dunya, I clearly will, will take this this route. We clearly yes. will twist ways to 
to be more to have allies. You want to have yeah. the Arab Quraysh allies. Why would you want to yeah. go against them to prosecute you and you can hide you in a minority, hide in, in, in someone's house, recite the Quran and move into Mecca, Medina? Why? Why make it the complicated way, Medina, and then to come back and when they're telling you already, we'll make you our king? Correct. Uh, you know, the logic is beyond me, subhanAllah. But go ahead, Akhi, continue. I, I, I can't wait to hear more about, about uh, Sikhism and, and similarities between and Islam. Alhamdulillah. So, um, <clears throat> As I go in uh, learning more about Islam, learning more about the Prophet of Islam, uh, like you say, okay, it just makes sense uh, that the Prophet was, te was telling the truth. I don't see, and, and trust me, okay, when I say, I, I spent about a year and a half looking for mistakes, looking for problems in the Quran and the Hadith, the lives, right? This is the, every time I open the Quran, every time I, 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 I read about the Prophet of Islam, I have one thing in my mind, that is to find any kind of problem, any kind of contradiction, any kind of problem. Allahu Akbar, I didn't find any. Allahu Akbar. There was none. There was Welcome none. The club. <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all did that. We all scrutinized <laughs> you know, our research and into this topic matter before we can move on to talking to other people from other faiths. And this is what I really recommend other people from other faiths to do, you know, you know, use textual criticism, investigate the historicity of everything, and then you should talk about Islam. Some people come in trying to talk about Islam, oh, you're prophet this, I'm like, okay, do you even know who Matthew is? <laughs> who's, what's up with Matthew? Or something. Right. Um, but really? anyway, Akhi, um, yep. I think so far, you covered some important facts that I, I myself didn't know, and I, hopefully, inshallah, this is beneficial. For everyone's watching, that the Sikh or Sikhism believe mm -hmm. in God and this God, they even call him Allah. Yes. And now, here's the question Do they believe that Sikh, the God of Sikhism is the same as the God of Muslims? Okay. Nah. No, they don't. Okay. So they, they call him Allah, but this is something mm -hmm. different now. Interesting. I'd like to so, hear more about that. Yeah. yeah so, uh, they don't believe in a sense of because they believe God is Allah, same like 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 Islam, right? It doesn't take away the attributes and everything. This is exactly the same, but they believe that Allah, like I said, resides in everything. So that's so that's the only difference. While well, we believe that Allah is in His uh, on His throne, uh, of course, metaphorically speaking, He's on His throne is uh, above heaven. Right, mm -hmm. and and he controls everything. It's all powerful. Now they believe the same thing that he controls everything. It's all powerful, but he resides in everyone. So that's the only difference in everyone and everything. No, no, but yeah. I know, like you said, the pantheism. But the idea of Allah, you know, do they believe that is? I mean, because you said they believe in the Prophet Muhammad, or at least yeah. the first gurus believe believe that he is the Prophet of Truth. He's the example to follow. So clearly they must believe in the same God that the Prophet Muhammad believed in. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. They yeah. do. Only thing is different in the sense of uh, we believe, yeah, we don't believe that God is uh, resides in everyone, but they do. Yeah. So that's the difference of uh, the opinion. But they, they believe the same thing that Allah is God. Mm. Interesting. Allah is the one God, yeah. Allah is the one God. And they, they kind of semi or pseudo believe in the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, I, he was a prophet, but it doesn't matter. Right now we have Guru Nanak, you know, whom we follow. Yeah. In the Sikhism, in, in the Sikh religion, is there uh, some sort of quote-unquote Sharia or law or Torah, some sort of set of laws that people have to follow? Yes. Um, interestingly, uh, yes. Uh, it is prohibited for them to drink alcohol. They can't drink alcohol. Mm. Although you see uh, Sikhism... Uh, oh, they can drink a lot of alcohol. Like Sikh people oh, drink alcohol. Alcohol. They can, yeah, drink. they, <laughs> they I mean, can drink. I, I, I know that I've seen, I mean, throughout some they can drink, bro. They, I, I, I was surprised yeah. because now you're saying it's haram, you know, quote unquote. Yes. That's true. Yeah. But the people that I see them also always, like, not always, but like they can drink, are like people that are religious, like they turban, long beard, right? Mm, 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 mm. What, what's going on? How do they justify this? Is this kind of like a Muslim who doesn't, I don't know, pray or Muslim that drinks or, or is that is that what it is kind of like that or uh well most of them is because they don't read the guru granth sahib 
they don't know what's written in there. So they don't know uh, if you go and tell them, do you know that it's prohibited to uh, consume alcohol or any kind of intoxications uh, in your religion, in Sikhism? They'll go like, huh? Where is it written? <laughs> That's what they'll go, huh? Where is it written? And when you show them, <laughs> and when you show them, they'll be like, oh, oh, okay. So they don't know. They don't know what's written in your own books. Mm. Uh, they have their own sharia, of course. Uh, you can't you can drink alcohol. You have to pray five times a day. Uh, you have to have this five case, which is the, the karapan, the small comb, the kanga, the bengal kara, right? And these are the identity of Sikhism. Now, this all came during the time of the 10th Guru. Even okay. the word Sikh, right? The, the word uh, Singh and Ko came from the 10th Guru. So all the nine Gurus, they didn't have Singh and Ko. That's a good point. Very good point. So we have here some sort of uh, um, Guruology, Ev like kind of like Christology. Yeah. We have some sort of yes. nanacology. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, when, when ten gurus came, uh, he 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 created this. Uh, that everyone from this religion, uh, for the boys, for the men, they, they need to hold the name Ting, which means lion, and for the girls, Ko, which means flower, right? And uh, when we study the Guru Granth Sahib, we see throughout the nine gurus, they uh, they explain or they talk about Islam. And they talk with, with, with a lot of respect. Mm. But when the 10th guru comes in, Guru Gobind Singh, you can see the shift. That's where Paul. he says, Is that the Paul of Yes. Sikhism? Yes. Yes. So you see, you see the totally difference. You see, when Guru, guru Gobind Singh is talking, he says, uh, uh, Islam is corrupted. We can't follow Islam. Some, the, Islam the, the teachings of Islam is wrong. So only the 10th Guru is coming in. For me, how I would explain, I would say uh, the 10th Guru is similar to uh, Paul in Christianity and uh, Athanasia who came up with the Trinity. Right? Interesting. So that's the uh, idea of the 10th Guru. Yeah. But, but, yeah. Subhanallah. Wow. I can, I can, but, I can, yeah. I can see you debating uh, <clears throat> uh, Sikhs about this because clearly, you know, I don't know of anyone uh, in any situation, mashallah, who, yep. who had, was Sikh and became Muslim. So you're aware not only of the religion and uh, the doctrine, you're also it, it was part of you know it's part of your culture. You grew up as a Sikh, so you went yep. to weddings, you meet you know cousins, friends, people there. You know what it is. You've seen it. You grew up in there, so you know what's going on. So they can't yeah. play these games with you of like, oh, alcohol, oh, this, oh, but the Prophet Muhammad is not, but the Quran is. Now, you have evidence, you can show them that all these gurus, they had no issues with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is later, yeah. later church, sorry, later uh, something addition. Sorry, I'm used to talking to Christians, so I use church there. Yeah, that's true. But you know what I mean? Later, yeah. I don't know, something addition. Later addition, yeah. Later, later, later uh, yeah, you can say later additions. Because the gurus, like I said, the gurus themselves never claim this. Never claim this. Just like, uh, just like the Christians, right? Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Isa salam, never claimed that he was the son of God or he was God. You never claimed this. Mm. And then you see later on Christians coming and saying that, uh, oh yeah, he's, he's God, incarnate. But this is your claim that you're putting onto, onto Jesus. Mm. Let's, let's, yeah, let's look at Jesus himself, what he claims about himself, rather than you putting the claim on him. Jesus himself never claimed. Yeah, Jesus himself never claimed that he's God. But did you also <laughs> look at Christianity while you were like looking yeah. into Subhanallah? Yes. What, what made you like? If you can talk briefly, this is not about Christianity, obviously, but uh, if you can tell us briefly, what made you not become Christian when you investigated the uh, yeah. Bible? So first thing is the Trinity, that God is three in one. What's wrong with that? God can't be three in one. There's only one God, and, uh, and, he, in, and, and the idea that God had to, they use the word, had to send his son or, or, or whatever to uh, uh, come and die 
shows the lack of attribute of God that is not all powerful. If God had to do something, he was forced to do something, then they cannot be God. Because God doesn't need to uh, force himself to do anything. Uh, God should be able to just forgive your sins like that. God holds everything, right? So why do we need why do we need uh, someone to die on the cross for us in order for uh, sins that Adam did uh, for us to be to, to to be cleansed and to be saved, right? So uh, that's one. And then the Trinity, God is uh, three beings, but they are not three. They are they are one. Doesn't make sense. That you 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 cannot. 2,000 years, okay, 2,000 years, and the Christians still can't explain the Trinity. Yeah, Allah. <laughs> right. you know, Allah, I always say this, matters of the Aqidah, the creed, the, your core theology, should be clear and simple and e easy to, you know, uh, be understood by average person. Yeah. It shouldn't require some sort of sophisticated, you know, uh, education or some knowledge in, in you know in philosophy and in these words and in this higher IQ. I always say this subhanAllah it shouldn't be. You know the concept of one God, you know, all the, we don't know anything of everything about God, but we know what God has told us about his majesty. We accept it. Correct. You know Correct. and it, it's easy to understand that God is one. One first yes. cause one but when you talk about the Trinity it's just, it's, it's na naturally you'll be confused. And yeah, like I said even William Lane Craig, you know, top leading Scholars Christianity. Now, some people might make takfir of him, even Christians, because it's easier to do that when, when he disagrees with you. Yes. Whatever. But the yes. fact of the matter, this guy is more learned than average Christian. That's a fact. And he's telling us that, folks, we don't understand what Trinity is. We don't. When we don't, as a matter of fact, he goes far to say that you don't even know, you don't even need to believe in the Trinity in order to be saved. And I made a video about that. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. Nahi. Well, obviously, you have. You have the you have the Unitarians who don't believe in the Trinity, right. and they say that the Trinitarians is wrong, and the Trinitarians are saying that the uh, Unitarians is wrong, and they have all these different sects, right? Where uh, the Roman Catholics say that the Protestant is wrong, and the Protestants say that it, uh, this is wrong, and they are pointing fingers to one another. Now, this itself is so confusing, uh, and I've. I've spoken to Christians, right, and 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 they, they will try to say that oh, it's the same in Islam, uh, just like uh, the uh, the Sunni and the Shia. I say, oh no 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 no, hold a minute, <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. The Shia believe the Quran is from Allah. The Sunni believe the Quran is from Allah. Okay. We and believe they, uh, there is one the, Quran. Yes. So it's not the same. It's not the uh, you guys have the four Gospels, the same Gospels, but you have different sects. So it's not the same at all. Okay, You can go to any Muslim, any Muslim. If the person claims to be a Muslim, ask him one question. Do you believe that the Quran comes from Allah? If he says no, he's not, in, he's not a Muslim. But he has left the fold of Islam. Absolutely. There's no doubt about yeah. it. And no Muslim on earth will tell you, no, no, no. You can, like, I remember there was a gentleman who was on the podcast uh, last week, I believe. Few days ago, yeah, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the legitimacy of the Bible and whether it's the Word of God, inerrant, etc. And he basically straight up said that, "Oh yeah, you can remove those verses. What about these? Ah, oh. uh, that one you can remove. It doesn't make a difference." And I was just completely blown away. I'm shocked. Like, what? <laughs> I can't imagine any Muslim on planet Earth or on the Moon, whatever you find them, that will tell you, "Oh yeah, yeah, that one you can just remove that chapter." Or, you know, ikhlas. It's a short chapter. Just remove it. It's okay. It's just unbelievable. We don't entertain it. such such, such things. Ah. Allah. Um, How can you play with words of God like that? How can you play? With, like, what authority do we have to 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 decide what 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 words of God, what teachings of God should mankind know and not know? Subhanallah. What authority do we have? Yeah. We can't um, even. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I wanted to ask you, Aki. Um, yep. when you so at 17 year old you started learning about Islam you said right when did you yep, take your shahada at what age did you take your shahada I was 17 17 at 17, 17. mashallah hey, very yeah. young mashallah, mashallah yeah. so, yeah. so I was 15 when I, when I got into uh, I started asking myself these questions about uh, about God uh, about the truth right? I was 15 
And uh, from there, I uh, studied the, the, the Quran, I studied the Hadith, I studied uh, Christianity. Uh, I reached one place of Christianity when, when I just immediately closed the Bible, put it aside, which was uh, John, 20, John 20, 17, where uh, Jesus claims very clearly, he's going back to your father, my father, going to your God, my God. Close the Bible, put it aside. By the, way, that, by, by the way, by the way, that's post resurrection, right? Post quote unquote. Yes. So now we already have Jesus who's supposed to be back to the escalon of you know co equal to the Father God. Because again, the cure was always well, no, he wasn't his mission on earth. Now he's resurrected. Again, yeah. this is not this is for Trinitarians, not Unitarians. Uh, he's back, he should be back to that escalon of equal. But then we find this co equal member of the Trinity has a father. And has a God who is the right. same God as Mary. SubhanAllah. He makes it clear that this father yes. of mine is your father. This God of mine is your God. Just to not have any special thing. Oh, no, he's a special son. And he just knocks this thing out of the water. And uh, So how can we go to their judgment? Yeah, I'll be thrown in hellfire for not believing in Trinity if we have such verse. And many other verses, SubhanAllah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know when you took your shahada on 17, what challenges did you face Maybe from family or friends or surroundings. If you're comfortable talking about it, if not, we can skip yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I uh, I woke up one day and uh, it was uh, asar asar time, and I went straight uh, to the mosque, and uh, the, the imam was there. They were praying asar. I waited for them. Once they finished, I went straight up and I said that I uh, I want to accept Islam. So, uh, yeah, I took the shahada. Shadu la ilaha illallah wa shadu anna muhammad al muhammaduhu wa rasul. And uh, alhamdulillah, I became Islam. Uh, you know, Allah protected me and Allah always protects me and everyone who, who, who truly accept, who truly believe in Islam, the, the teachings of, of the truth of Allah, right? I went back and I told my parents, I told my mom first that I've accepted Islam. My mom looked at me for about five minutes and did not say anything. And she asked me a question that's totally in re re not relevant to, to Islam. She asked, you still, I mean, you know that you're my son, right? I said, yeah, of course. Okay, I've got no problem. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, right? So uh, my dad, of course, as a man in the family, he was like, uh, why Islam? Uh, why is what, what was the problem with Sikhism? Uh, why why this? Why that? So as I uh, explain Islam to to uh, to my father, he asked me the same question. So after now now that you're Islam, do I lose you as a son? Uh, I said no. I said no. No no no. You don't lose me as a son. I'm still your son, right? I'm still your son. So uh, yeah, it is, we, we, it is prohibited on us to, that, that we we can't even say we can't even raise our voice to our parents in Islam. So, That's how the teaching says. So uh, we have to respect our parents, and of course we do respect our parents in Islam. Uh, but my extended family, mm. yeah, they 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 had a lot of things to say. So uh, they were calling out my father, and they were telling like, get him out from the house. He's convert. He's a, uh, he betrayed his uh, his family. I don't know like, how I betrayed. Well, <laughs> uh, Alhamdulillah. So there was this one night when the whole, all my family was there, and uh, my uncles and my aunties was there, and my dad was there in, in in my dad's house, and they were saying they were talking about me. I was there. They said like uh, you know, Hasmik has betrayed the family. He's accepted Islam. The people who killed the gurus and all that. I mean, it goes to Mughal Empire and all that, right? So I uh, need to get get. Uh, he, he's not part of our family. He needs to get him out from the house. You know, throw him away, uh, disown him as 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 your as your child. So my father said, uh, Alhamdulillah. My father woke up and said uh, to the to my uncle, said, Look here, bro. It's my son. This is my house. If anyone needs to go out, it's you. Ask me, it's not Allah going Akbar. Anyway. Your, your, your dad yeah. actually defended this position. Your position. Yes, Alhamdulillah. 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 Yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 You got lucky, Alhamdulillah. You had support from the family. 
because yeah. you know I, I do hear things. I mean, I'm not sure, obviously, but I do hear that there is <clears throat> a lot of sensitivity mm -hmm. between Muslims, you know, of the subcontinent, India, Pakistan region, Bangladesh, and um, and and, uh, and the Hindus or and Sikhs. I mean, I know Sikhs yeah. are a minority in comparison to the Hindus, obviously, but Sikhs yeah. do hold this position where they feel that, like you said, Muslims, you know, through the Mughal Empire have affected them, have burned some of them, have put some of them in, you know, like, I don't know, tortured some yeah, of them. I, I just like to say something out there, first of all. You know, the, the Mughals are, were Muslims. The Amawid were Muslims. Abbasid were Muslims. You know, the Murabiton in, in North Africa were Muslims. The Muhyiddin were Muslims. But, again, these are people ruling. Correct. And an Ormans as well, or Muslims. We don't deny that the Ormans have done, could have done, or have done some uh, some people, like Armenians might call them atrocities and all. Yeah, but this does not represent Islam. This does not, 100%. Yeah. They were Muslims, of course, without a doubt. But they're not perfect. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. They're not perfect. Yeah. They're not ruling as the Sahaba have ruled and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi have ruled. They're not at the level of Umar ibn Khattab. Or even Umar ibn Abdul Aziz would not, was not even a poor person in his land. Even the birds okay. were, were full. SubhanAllah Adim. So, yes, just because of some historical events have happened, this should not you know, elicit some sort of hatred uh, towards the Muslims. Yeah. Allah, yeah, I because... Find on that, please, if you don't they, mind. Yeah, so, uh, they, 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 once again, it's been, it's been uh, taught down through the generations. Uh, the, the Jahangir, Right, he uh, executed the fifth guru, Guru Arjun Dev. Right, and it wasn't uh, so. The claim is that uh, they tried to the Mughals uh, forced the guru to accept Islam. This is simply not true. La ikrah of din, it's no compulsion in, in 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 the religion. It was a political uh, guess. Uh, Yes, Jahangir did ask the Guru to uh, change his religion to accept Islam, but not because of the truth, because of a political reason, because Jahangir uh, felt threatened of, of his throne that the Guru is going to take over his throne. So if he could make the Guru accept Islam, then the Guru will always be below him and he will always remain the king. Yeah, and we can go into that in another in another place because the, the, the story is very big, it's very yeah. deep in. Yeah. You and made then, it very uh, clear. Uh, yeah. You made it very clear, Akhi. Like, uh, yeah, it's political. Politics yeah. is involved. So if one of the leaders of the Muslims happened to be, uh, you know, not hundred percent, you know, ruling by the book of Allah, and uh, mm -hmm. th these these are these are humans and people, and people do make mistakes. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this doesn't, again, does not reflect on what the Quran teaches. You said already, la yep. that's it. And yep. this idea of la has been implemented throughout the Muslim Ummah, if you think about it, even in India. I mean, did the Muslims in Mughal Empire want to start slaughtering any Hindu and, and, and just burning and demolishing any Hindu temple or any place? That No. Why do we have more Hindus today than Muslims? If When Muslims were in power with their sophisticated army and wealth, they could, they could have exterminated, you know, they, they, multiple they, they, tribes and many tribes, but this is not the case we see. Same thing in Egypt, same thing in the Middle East. Churches of the Christians are still surviving today. If that was the yeah. case, the Muslim in power, they could have annihilated the whole idea. There will not be a soul that carries a cross around. But this is not what we see. They were respected and they were called Vimmis, like the Christians at least yeah. in that. The, the, I don't know why the world today is uh, has so much of hate about Islam that they, uh, they don't want to read the Quran, they don't want to do the research into the Prophet of Islam, but they just want to create stories and believe what they want to believe. Right? And they want to they won't say that Islam is wrong, they want to say Islam is violent, they want to say Islam is this and that and the other, uh, but not knowing anything. Like one of the, uh, the Mughal uh, Emperor, Aurangzeb. Now Aurangzeb was known to be, from all the emperors, he was the most uh, Islamic of them. He prayed five times. He did not uh, consume alcohol uh, and so on. Now, there's a lot of claims that the, the, the Hindus make about him. 
And what's happening today in India with the BJP government, they are trying to make uh, Aurangzeb look bad because of the reason of the, uh, that uh, he went around and uh, broke all idols and the temples, uh, Hindu temples. But wait a minute, if that was true, why do you still have uh, so many documentaries talking about the greatness of India, talking about the greatness of the temple, uh, you know, uh, how they designed it and everything, if Aurangzeb broke everything, right? Now, Aurangzeb did, Aurangzeb did not break anything. In fact, most of his governors were Hindu. Most of his governors were Hindus, right? And, and this goes down in history. It's written in history. It's not. It's not just a, a proclamation saying that all oh, this and that and everything. Most of his uh, 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 people in power were Hindu, and and he had no problems with Hindu. He had no problems with Hindu. In his government, uh, in his government, and multiple uh, Mughal rulers, in their government, they had Hindus. Uh, you know, as, as, as like uh, top leaders of some states and some parts of India. This is this is a known fact in history. And subhanAllah, we find the same thing in Egypt when Amr ibn al-As went to Egypt. He did Futuhat in Egypt. He was, he was welcomed there because of the uh, the uh, oppression that the average Christian Egyptian, look at the irony, received from mm. Christian Romans. And, mm. and in the Middle East also, the Christian Syrians and Palestinians, uh, the oppression they received from the Byzantium Romans uh, was so severe and so bad that they welcomed Muslims with open arms. Um, yeah, Louis Bernard talks about this in his book that I just finished reading, Arabs in History. Subhanallah. And Amr ibn As, he even asked in Egypt, he told them, uh, he brought the, uh, and this is found by the way in the in, uh, uh, the encyclopedia of the Kipt, of the Coptic people. The Coptic, yeah. Exactly. You can find this written by Christian Egyptians. When Amr ibn As came in, he actually brought the bishops. Uh, of Alexandria, of parts of Egypt, and he asked them. He told them, "What is an average uh, price that uh, these people can pay as jizya mm -hmm. that would not break the average Egyptian's back?" Because right. they were they were getting killed by this idea of paying money to the Romans. They were paying a lot of money mm. to the Romans, so it was dropped dramatically, and it was so low compared to the zakat. It's not even. Uh, you can't even compare them for the people that tell you, oh, most people convert to Islam just because, you know, the jizya. No, well, that makes sense because jizya was so much less than the zakat. That's number right. one. Number two, something to ponder on is that, uh, Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khair for bringing that point. This is good uh, to, to mention. Number two is that, think about this. When Amr ibn As brought these people and asked them about the jizya, what does that mean? When you That means that you get to keep your religion. Because who pays yeah. the jizya? Brother Hasmit. The Muslim pay jizya or non-Muslim? The Muslim. The non-Muslims. The non-Muslims. Non yeah, we pay zakat, they pay jizya. So the fact yeah. that he's telling them that they're going to pay jizya tells you that he did not force them to convert. Allahu Akbar. Right. The haq is so clear. All, all people got to do is read. SubhanAllah. Um, very interesting. But even, Allah, even if you go to the, uh, the Andalusia, Spain, right? It was the Muslim for 800 years who got, who, who governed then, and and they were the the Christians were were killing the uh, the Jews, and it was the Muslims who who uh, defended the Jews, right? If not for the Muslims, uh, I believe that Jews would have been wiped up from the face of the earth. Absolutely, it would have been exterminated by the Romans. This is a known fact, even written by and attested by uh, Jewish academics. Yeah. Again, the, we live in an age where it is shameful for people to just, you know, go go and you know Google stuff and go to some hateful website and leave the what the academics are saying. Jewish would, people were definitely protected under. Ahi, I'm gonna read something for you. Just Subhanallah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that, brought this up about uh, something I found in that book that I was just telling you about. Okay. The Arab in history, and it talks about the position of. Um, Muslims, subhanAllah. But uh, by the time I find it, I just want I want you to tell us a little bit more about uh, your journey. So your father, alhamdulillah, and he was on your side, and it seems like yeah. both your family helped you out with this. But yeah. did you? what other challenges did you find? Like, So you, you took shahada. Uh, what about when yeah. it comes to salat, when it comes to fasting Ramadan? Speaking of Ramadan, it's coming up soon, inshallah. Uh, 
How did that work yeah. for a young man living, you know, in a house? Yeah. That, so, um, Ramadan was quite uh, a challenge. Um, but as, as practice goes on, you know, I, 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 it became a uh, norm to me. Uh, I, today, I love, I love Ramadan more than uh, Idol Fitur itself. I, I love to do, to do Ramadan and um, follow the Prophet where we fast on uh, every Monday and Thursdays. Uh, Allah. They would know, really, Allah, Allah protected me very much. Uh, they would know uh, I didn't face anything uh, like how others would have faced with their family. My family accepted me. Uh, I told them that I, I, I'm Islam. They accepted, they defended me. Uh, they still accept me as the son. Of course, they, they are not Islam. Right? They, they, they have not uh, accepted Islam yet. May Allah guide them. May Allah Amen. guide them, I mean. So, uh, yeah. Make dua, I, I, make dua everybody in the chat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. Yeah, please do. Please do make dua that uh, Allah will guide my parents, my family to accept Islam. Yeah, so uh, the only problem that I had in Malaysia or that I see is that when I explain to the the born Muslims, the born Malays in Malaysia, that I'm a uh, I'm a convert or revert, they tend to move away from me, and I don't know why. Uh, I don't understand that. Uh, you mean because they're told never, by their family to stay away from this guy? Uh, I don't think so. I think they, they just don't feel comfortable enough. Now, uh, I, I asked one of my friends, I said, why, why do they do this? They say, oh, okay, because as a revert, you studied Islam. And they, because they were born Islam, uh, they did not study Islam. So they are basically afraid if you ask them any question and they will be embarrassed to not be able to answer it. So that's why they move away. But okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Don't worry about that, right? Yeah, that, 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 that was the only, uh, only problem. But Alhamdulillah now, uh, it, it's so much, more, so much more better. So much more, uh, okay, I've made friends, a lot, a lot of uh, non-Muslims friends, a lot of uh, uh, Muslim friends, Christians and, and everything. So I do this every day, Aki, uh, for the last one year. I practice this every single day, every single day, literally, at least once a day, at the minimum, I will talk about the truth of Islam to someone. He can be a Muslim, he can be a non-Muslim. I'll talk about the truth of the Quran and the truth of, of the Prophet wasalam, to one person Mashallah. every single day. And this is something that I want to continue until the end of my life. MashaAllah, right? my Allah, bless you and reward you, Akhi, for that. You're the one, the Sunnah of the Prophet You know? Yeah. Uh, MashaAllah. Um, I think Khalid, everybody should do that. Yeah, I think everybody should do that. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is a duty of every Muslim, you know. This is a duty of Muslim. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to have, uh, you know, a platform where you can go out there on stage and debate uh, top debaters. It doesn't have to be that way. There's no debate. There's, even just this discussion. You know, yeah. a Muslim should be confident enough, especially in, in, uh, nowadays, uh, when something happens. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're at work, whether you're at the gym, you know, and something happens, anything you mentioned. Yeah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, you know. Uh, like COVID happened, people suddenly start, uh, uh, you know, uh, handshake, no handshake. It's amazing how people like would criticize guys, uh, people that like don't shake hands with opposite sex, whatever. And then <laughs> oh, COVID nice happened. Uh, suddenly, uh, you know, don't don't shake hands, don't touch. Like, mm. And then or like uh, or like the hygiene idea of hygiene, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned in right. Islam, this is part of an Allah for iman. It's part of the deen to be clean, and these things. Right. There's so many things. You can literally any topic. You can bring up the rule of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Islam in the And I agree with you 100%. Akhi. May Allah 100%. bless you and you. And then, so now today, um, yeah. how is the situation going with the family? Do you live home or you're out? Are you married? Are you single? What's going yeah. on with you? So I'm single. Uh, I'm not married yet. But 
to all the Malaysian sisters, to all the Malaysian sisters over there watching, we have a single Muslim brother, mashallah. Yeah, not really. Uh, <laughs> I see the big smile now. I see the big smile coming up now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm on my way. Allah has sent me a companion, uh, beautiful, a beautiful sister, uh, and uh, I, I am in love with her as she is with me. Marshall, wait, she... you, you haven't you married? Is it or? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, but, what are you talking to? Yeah, I'm planning to get married to her uh, next oh, year. Oh, khalas, you know what? Erase what I said. The brother okay. has already come on. <laughs> if, if the sister is watching this, forgive me. I didn't know that. Okay, continue. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, inshallah, uh, everything goes well and Allah bless us and we can get married. Uh, we can get nikah uh, next year. Um, and the uh, situation with my family is, is, is still the same. So, I, I live by myself. Um, and my parents live in their own home, but uh, sometimes they come, they live with me, they stay for a week or two weeks, you know, and sometimes I go to their house. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed uh, except for me being a Muslim. Uh, other than that, nothing has changed. You, you know, like I said, uh, they're still my parents and I'm still their son. Of course. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so I, when I speak to a lot of uh, revert uh, brothers and sisters, one thing they tell me, is that uh, their parents, they notice the change in behavior uh, after, you know, accepting Islam. SubhanAllah, they realize that, the, however, whatever personality you had, it just becomes more calmer, uh, I guess more spiritual in a sense, and uh, kind of uh, discipline in terms of uh, yeah. your prayer on time and that. And this is something that impresses everyone. I don't care. You can be the biggest hater of Islam. When people see you disciplined and you say to someone, in whatever, whatever platform you are, Excuse me, I have to go pray. But what? What? Yeah. Some people think prayer is just like close your eyes and do this. No, that that's your form of du'a. We have also our form of yes. du'a, but we also have salat. You know, kind of like what okay. Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. That that one, Subhanallah. Yeah. And, when he, and it doesn't matter who, who you're with. If you say, yeah. "I'm going to," people respect that, Akhi. Subhanallah. Of course, people respect that. Yeah. yeah. You, you, don't don't see, see you don't see anyone in any other religion. That that, that 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 advocates salah, okay. Five times a salah, you have to pray, you have to pray, uh, you have to worship God, right? And uh, yes, because the the idea is every single day that you wake up in the morning, if you wake up, that's a blessing. Alhamdulillah. That's a that's a blessing that Allah has given to you. That Allah has decided, okay, today you will wake up, today you will live, today your heart will beat. Today your blood will flow, right? All by the permission of Allah. So, uh, Allah you know, Allah. of course we worship Him for 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 all this for all these reasons. We have to worship Him, right? And we love Allah, right? Uh, in 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 all His nobleness, all His love, we love Him, we revere Him, we 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 are afraid of Him in the sense of His we fear awareness. Him, we fear Allah, of yeah. course, absolutely. Of course. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and now what about the prophets? The will of the prophets too or no as Muslims? Which prophets for the for the secular? No, no, no. Uh, the prophets. The prophets of Allah. The prophets. In, mm -hmm. Isa, Musa, Ibrahim, Nuh, Dawood, Suleiman. Do we love them as well or no? Oh, yes. Of course we do. Of course we do. Of course we love them. This is to comment on uh, Unitarian Christian. Why do Trinitarians assume Muslims hate the prophets? Jesus. It's amazing. I don't know why uh, Unitarian Christian. It's just mind-boggling. We actually say, Moses... What do we say after Moses, Akhi? Jesus. Moses, uh, what, alayhi what, salam. Exactly, alayhi salam. Yeah. We say, peace be upon him. Muhammad, yeah. peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him. Why would someone that hates someone say, peace be upon them? This is nonsense, Akhi, subhanAllah. We, of course, we love the prophets of Allah. You know? And yes. we don't distinguish between them. And you know something, just for you know, I, I agree with you. I've, I, I don't know why they do that, Trinitarians. But to be honest with you, I feel like it's just another way, like Brother Hasmi was saying, uh, to find ways to stab the honor of Islam. You know, is any gap trying to find it to attack Islam? Because clearly we don't. Yeah. I mean, the Quran is clear about the way. we we hate the Prophet. Do we call Suleiman idolater? Do we call do we do we accuse Lot of incest? Do we, yeah, we, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't. accuse uh, Dawood with adultery? Do we are we the one that do these things? Subhanallah. 
Yeah. No, I don't. I always advise people to read the Quran, Christians, to, to find the re the tone, the respect, and the status that the prophets are given. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. All. Jamian. MashaAllah. Yeah. So now, when is the wedding, brother? Inshallah, it's going to be in uh, May. I haven't put down, locked down a date yet. All right, I'm coming to Malaysia. <laughs> Let's go. Alhamdulillah. Please do. Please do. Please do. Please do. Please do. Please do. Yes. Uh, so one of the brothers, brother Apeng CGP, was asking for your email uh, address. Obviously, it's a personal email. You're not gonna give it live, but is the, you have? Do you have any way where people can contact you? Maybe your YouTube channel. Maybe the brother can contact you through there. What's your YouTube channel, Akhi? Uh, so yeah, I don't have a YouTube channel, um, but I have a Facebook uh, Messenger. You can contact me through Facebook Messenger or uh, Instagram, uh, and uh, it's H A S M E E T. C H A A L, Hasmit Chal. I'm gonna copy it right now and uh, mm. and uh, just drop it in the chat for whoever yeah. wants to contact you from Malaysia or from any parts of the world. Definitely get in touch with the brother if you have anything there. In so it's in the chat, inshallah. Inshallah. So yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, you can contact me uh, to to that and. Um, I'm always looking for uh, brothers and sisters to come and uh, share Islam uh, with the Malaysian uh, students over here because I really want to empower them uh, with the true Islam, the Islam from the Quran, the Islam from the Sunnah, the Islam from, from the, the Sirah and from all the prophets, right? Where then they can go out and talk about the truth of Islam. And... Uh, the ultimate goal for this is to stop Islamophobia, to stop the, 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 the spread of lies about Islam. The only way for me I see that we can stop this is by when someone tells a lie about Islam, we counter it with the truth. Mm. The image must be corrected because, and it, it's amazing, you know, it's, it's amazing actually, like, the reason why I even I should say one of the reasons why I even got into this field is really it just didn't make sense. Like I hear things in Fox News, CNN, from people, websites, uh, YouTube channels, and I'm looking at them and I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> this is a lie. That's a lie. Sure. This is wrong. This one is misquoting. And and I'm thinking about it like I mean clearly like we're not in any big level or any big platform, but we do whatever we can. And the help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the word we can anyone and everyone should be able to make the difference. It doesn't matter if you spoke to one person, it can make a, a difference to that person's perspective about Islam, and they can actually you can push them to go learn about the religion of Allah, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and subhanAllah, until now, you know, we have all these uh, arguments that we bring up forward to the table, and all the Dawah channels, mashallah. And they haven't been refuted, really. Islam. All we hear is like nonsense. Mecca is not yeah. like, uh, your prophet uh, had multiple wives and he nothing really solid. And the thing is, the, she most people uh, again hateful missionaries. Not everyone, obviously. They can't attack the aqidah. They can't talk really about Allah. They can't. They can't dare. So the the only way they try to find a way to try to stab Islam, they try attempt is right. to try to attack the the character of the prophet Sallallahu Notice that every time we have something, it's always they trying to attack the prophet. They can't dare talk about Aqidah. We tell them, okay, let's talk about God. You know? uh, well, I'm not ready to talk about the Trinity. When are <laughs> yeah. you ready? You're like 37. When are you ready? Like, subhanAllah. Let's talk about divinity of Jesus. Well, I wasn't prepared. SubhanAllah. Right. You believe <laughs> it. You know? what, what, what are you preparing for? Not, we're not debating. We're just having a discussion. Just to tell us why you believe Jesus is God or other topics. But uh, subhanAllah, so far, nothing's been impressive from the other side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gu guide the sincere one amongst them. I mean, uh, you know, if, even, even when they try to uh, attack the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying that he had multiple wives, or the mo one of the most famous ones uh, that uh, the Prophet married, Aisha radiallahu uh, at the at a very young age, the fact is... That whether he had multiple wives or he married Aisha at whatever age doesn't take away his prophethood. 
it's not even to be honest with you, to be honest with you, Akhi, ask me. Yeah. It's not even worth to entertain such ridiculous argument. It's like this is like, are you serious? Are you gonna come here and talk to me about uh, you got married? Look, look, he has more than wife. Like, are you serious? Is this how you're gonna? So, if I give you an example from your book of someone who was married with someone at a younger age, quote unquote, a younger age, based on yep. the culture and not falling in the fallacy of presentism, etc. What are you going to do? Are you going to be consistent or no? It's not even worth it. But we realize that sometimes we have to do that because obviously, you know, people come in different levels. And so some people are just stuck on that. Mm. You have to like, we must yeah. remember that, by the way. This is advice I give people every time. You, what you know, you might have heard this argument a million times. You know what exactly, you know why it's complete nonsense, can be refuted in yeah. 45 seconds. But some people, subhanAllah, they're, just, they're stuck there. And they're stuck you, must, there. you must give the hujah. Before you move on, um, correct. Yeah, uh, Hasmi, should we uh, take some questions from the brothers and sisters? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Sure. So, okay. for the brothers and sisters out there in chat, if you have any questions for the brother, brother Hasmit, do jump in, inshallah, and ask your question because he did tell me that he has to go. He had to. He had to go like around what nine thirty, right? He said. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. nine thirty. So, so and once again, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward and bless our brother. Um, yeah. For accepting to be in a podcast and sharing with us his uh, journey to haq, to truth, Islam, uh, and how he dealt with it, uh, and give us also some understanding of the basics of Sikhism. So, so far we learned, like you said, that they believe in Allah, but the concept of monotheism or, or, or is a little bit different. They're more like pantheists. You also mm -hmm. said that they believe, or they're supposed to believe, in the Prophet Muhammad. And even the grand guru had said that yep. he's an example to follow. As you said, if you want Correct. to see the sweetness. How was that? What was that statement that you mentioned? If you want to taste the true sweetness of truth, follow the Prophet of Islam. Okay, so Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I'm, I'm done here. I think I've heard enough. <laughs> like, um, I'm just, this idea of saying right now. I mean, literally, you can just use this. What, what does this mean? I'll tell you. So now nobody can come and no Sikh, I see this with respect, can come and say anything about the Prophet Muhammad yeah. you, you can't. The only thing you can do is to follow him as a model. Because yeah. the founder of the religion said so, of Sikhism. Yeah. Said so. This is amazing, Akhi. And uh, But we learned also that with time and other, well, what shall I say, not disciples, but what other gurus came, Things have start, mm. you know, shifting and changing to a level that Correct. new things entered. Now we have to carry certain things. You have to uh, have certain look, right? The hair. Correct. The, uh, Correct. the, the, the how do you call Kara. the knife? Kara. Kara is the thing oh, here. The uh, Kara is the thing. Bracelet, yeah, the right? knife is called. Yeah, the the knife is called karpan. Karpan, karpan, and kara. Yeah. And then uh, what are some of the things? So the hair too, right? The, the hair must be long. Yeah, the, the hair. Yeah, you can't cut your hair. Any, any, any hair on your body, you can't cut it. You can't cut anything. Yeah, can't yeah. cut anything. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. what else? Those are three things. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's about it. You have kachera. Kachera is a some a sort of a uh, white underpants. Okay, that you that you normally uh, wear. Yeah, I heard about that. Right. Yeah, and then you have the uh, karapan. Which is a small knife. Now, the reason for this is because if there is any injustice happening, right, the sick have to defend and always stand for the truth. That's why they, they carry that, 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 that knife around. Was the that teaching to be symbolic? Sick... Sorry? Was that supposed to be symbolic or was it for real, for like some sort of jihad? Like, you gotta be ready. Yeah. You, got, you, you have to always be. Uh, you have to always uphold the truth. The comb, so if you see, the, comb? Uh, the comb is so that you, you know you the, you always look clean. You always look you know uh, composed, presentable, right? presentable and acceptable. Uh, so you see, it's very close, very very close to Islam. Uh, hygiene wise, uh, uh, you know, the Prophet of Islam says, uh, you know, uh, keep your beard but shave the mustache. Right? And keep it clean, keep it uh, presentable, you know, make sure yourself is clean, make sure you're, you're, you're dressed well. So it's the same thing with, with, with Sikhism as well. 
you don't find any kind of wrong teachings in Sikhism other than the uh, God being in uh, other than the Yeah, other, other than, than the, the, core, the core teaching, the core, yes. which is everything really. Subhanallah, in, in that sense. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was gonna share something with you earlier. Uh, yep. So basically, in the book called "The Arabs in History," right uh, by Bernard Lewis, he talks basically. He says that. The conquerors did not interfere with the internal, uh, with the internal civil and religious administration of the conquered people, peoples, who received the status of vimmis, right? That is member mm. of the tolerated religious religions permitted by the law. The law of Islam permits this. He's saying that, right? Such ev he says. Then he goes. He says, such evidence as we have seemed to indicate that the change from Byzantine to Arab rule was welcomed by many among the subject peoples. We found the new yoke far lighter than the old, both in, tax in taxation and in other matters. Now he says, some, some even among the Christian populations of Syria and Egypt preferred the rule of Islam to that of the Byzantines. He goes on to say again, a Jewish... Apocalyptic writing of the early Islamic period makes an angel say to a rabbinic seer, he says the follow, Do not fear, bin Yochai. The creator, blessed be he, has only brought the kingdom of Ishmael in order to save you from this wickedness of Byzantium. The holy one, blessed be he, will raise up for them a prophet according to his will and conquer the land for them. And they will come and restore it. This is what Christians use as kingdom of God, kingdom of God. This is it. The the, the law the, of God on earth. Yeah. You know, This is what we're supposed mm. to be. We may compare with this the words of a later Syriac Christian historian. He says mm -hmm. the following. Therefore the God of vengeance delivered us out of the hand of the Romans by means of the Arabs. It profited us not a little to be saved from the cruelty of the Roman Romans and their bitter hatred toward us. The peoples of the conquered provinces did not confine themselves simply to accepting the new regime, but in some cases actively assisted in its establishment. Subhanallah. It's amazing. These are the people who were Christians in the Middle East. Um, now they're being bombarded and, 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 and killed by, by others. These are the people that were Christians, were not under any mercy yeah. from their fellow Christians who were from the Roman, uh, Romans. Romans basically, Byzantium at the time, right? SubhanAllah. And they actually were waiting for liberation. So when we say that Islam came to liberate people, and some people still argue, well, Islam by the sword, by the sword, by the sword. How are you going to say about the sword if we know for a fact that mm. the crusaders were sent by actually the church? Go yes. kill. Holy war. You want to talk about holy war? This is holy war. They were sent mm. to slaughter everyone in Jerusalem. and that. Right. How do you explain that when you have ships that left Spain and Portugal and parts of Europe sent by the church to go and mass conversion of mm. the indigenous of the Americas? And whoever did not accept were put to the sword. How do you regard this fact of history and come and accuse Islam, which liberated the world? Allahu Akbar. Right. We don't we don't shy from saying that there are some parts, some rules, like I said earlier, that yeah. made mistakes. We're not we're not saying that didn't happen in history. We're not. But yeah. the fundamentals of Muslims in Islam does not teach this, nor is it even fair to be compared to the atrocities that were conducted yeah. under the cross. Go ahead, my brother. Right. So you see, one of the biggest uh, the demographic uh, of Islam is in Indonesia, and which thought came to Indonesia? There's no. It was, it was never about war. It was about aqidah that they accepted uh, Islam. Which sort? Uh, was it? There. there was no sort. There was no sort, <laughs> right? Uh, except for salt. The taste one. So yeah, so uh, it was it was never about war, and yes, like you said, Akhi, I definitely agree. Uh, what human being do 
it's based on what human being do. It's not based on a religion. Sometimes, like for example, ISIS people claim that ISIS are Muslims just because they dress like an Arab and they go around shout, shouting Allahu Akbar. Doesn't make them Islam. Doesn't make them Islam. No, right? but the, the question I always ask: Why point out a probably zero point zero 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 one of a population? It's not even scientific. It's not even academic. Two. To explain what Islam is. Is that what we do in science? Is that what we do in an experiment? Is that what we do in any, uh, for God's sake, any reasonable conversation? You take the fringe, you know, the minority yeah. of minorities, and you say that this is Islam, and you're going to forget about average uh, Ahmed, exactly. average Mustafa, the average Abdullah, or average Zainab, average Fatima, that go to work and work hard, save lives probably in healthcare uh, yeah. facilities and work and courts and laws and you know and just Allah Akbar you forget about all these and you're gonna point out to this this is hypocrisy okay this is yes. pure hypocrisy. Pure um, hypocrisy yeah subhanallah alim. um so okay before we uh, close I, I mean I'm sending the link here for anybody that has any questions yeah. but I think mashallah you articulated yourself very well um what is your uh advice what do you say to an average young Sikh who's watching this what is your message okay. to them? My message to them would be one that's very simple, very easy. Read, read your own scripture. Read your Guru Granth Sahib and then read the Quran. Mm. Do it. Yeah? It's like reading a book. If you can spend uh, what one week reading Harry Potter, all the, all the, the, the volume, right? Now spend about the same week to read the Quran and read the Guru Granth Sahib. Because once you get into that, you will be able to see the truth, right? You will be able to see the, the, the differences. You will be able to see uh, why Islam came, right? And uh, I always like to put this into context. Islam did not come down to make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Islam came down to deal with real problems, with real solutions. So it's not just, you know, uh, oh, it feels good, you know, uh, all my sins has been covered, I can do anything that I want and all this and all that. No, no, no. Islam came down to deal with real problems. You can't, uh, you can't, uh, consume alcohol because it's bad for you. You might kill yourself. You might hurt others if, uh, even in fact, right? And Allah says, you can't, don't go near zina. Because Allah knows us, right? We'll be attracted to women and women will be attracted to us. That's how uh, the innate disposition that we have, right? So Allah says, don't even go near because you'll be attracted to it, right? So all of this, but people can't accept it because like I, I, I want to do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with this girl or this, I want to go out with her, I want to touch her, I want to do this and that. So Islam doesn't uh, allow me to do this. So because of that, they, 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 they make these things in their head and they say, oh, you know, uh, the prophet of Islam uh, married uh, more than one woman. It's a this, it's a that, it's a this, it's a that. Trying to justify hmm. that what they are doing is okay. Interesting. Yeah. Allah. Barakallah. That's a beautiful advice. Um, and I think it's fair advice. There's no, you know, the brother's not trying to let you sign some form <laughs> of conversion or some, he's not putting a spell on you. But he's yeah. telling you to read your own books, right? Uh, kind of like maybe rewatch this again of what he mentioned earlier about what led him to read the Quran. Read the Quran and contrast and see whether uh, it makes sense. Uh, for the Quran, I think we have Brother Tamimi here mm. who uh, joined us. Uh, Brother Tamimi, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Akhi. Um, where are you calling from? From Jordan. Ahlaw sahlan. Welcome, Akhi. Ahlaw sahla fiik. Nice to have you, Brother Seat here. Barakallah fiik. Thank you very much, Akhi. Do you have any question for Brother Hasmid? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I would like to ask about the Sikh scripture. Do they believe that it's the exact word of God? And uh, does it have any prophecies? Yeah. 
So uh, for the six scriptures, they believe that uh, it's the it's the direct word of God. But when you look at the history of it, like I said, uh, it was actually written by the gurus and even by uh, the Muslims uh, at that time, right? So it cannot be the direct word of God, uh, like how uh, Islam claims. Uh, the, and of course, we, we have the, the right claim. <clears throat> uh, so prophecies, they don't speak much about prophecies because it talks about the, the greatness of God talks about the greatness of, of, of God being uh, one, of the Tawhidness of God. There's no, there's no real prophecies in, in, in the uh, Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah. That answered and how, your question, okay? Yeah. How, how can uh, they differentiate between like a true Guru or a fake one? Okay. So there's only 10 Gurus, right? And all the 10 Gurus... Uh, they have the, the, the names and they have the uh, biography of the Stan Gurus. So anyone other than the Stan Gurus uh, claim to be a Guru uh, is, is not a Guru. Uh, now, like I said, from the nine Gurus, they had nothing to say bad about Islam, about uh, the Prophet of Islam, about Allah. When it came to the 10th Guru, which is Guru Gobind Singh, then you see the difference the way this, where he starts to then advocate and say that uh, some scripture might be, have been changed. Uh, there's, there are errors in Islam and so on and so forth. There is no... I've actually asked a, a Sikh uh, this. I said, I can, in order for you to make the claim that someone is a prophet of God, you need to be able to, 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 to prove it, substantiate it in a way. Now, in Islam, we can prove it. We can show it, right? Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, evidence. What about Guru Nanak? Did he have evidence? If he was, if he was the prophet, just think about it. If he was a prophet, why is he saying, if you want to taste the sweetness of truth, if you want to taste the sweetness of truth, then follow the prophet of Islam. If he himself was a prophet, right? If you were going to claim that he was a prophet, then you're going against your prophet because your prophet just said, follow the, 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 the prophet of Islam. So you're going against your prophet by not following the prophet of Islam. That's a fair argument. So, thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. 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 Mashallah. Yeah, okay. yeah okay, I think we covered uh, some very good basics there uh, about Sikhism. Talked about the similarities between the two faiths, um, as well as Subhanallah. Anyone who, who just objectively read read their uh, scriptures, you know, in Sikhism, they should lead yeah. you to wanting to read the Quran. Correct. As you mentioned, you know, if it's directing you to the Prophet, if you want the truth, follow this Prophet. Well, what Correct. did this Prophet bring? The Quran. Okay, let's see the Quran. <laughs> Subhanallah, it all makes sense. So, I it think, all makes uh, sense, yeah. Yeah, I think it's fair. And, uh, you know, Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide I mean, our Sikh brothers and sisters in humanity. We want to tell them that we love them for the sake of Allah. We do. As we and our brothers and sisters in humanity. And that any yeah. one of them is potential to be our brother in Islam. Because this deen has come for all. Um, Correct. We, we invite you to believe in the one true God that you believe already and we tell you that there might be some corrections that needed in terms of this idea of God being everywhere um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of this universe yes. you know, and he's not part of this universe, everything's universe well we know there is evil and there is goodness so now we're saying that God is part of evil as well of course not <laughs> subhanAllah yeah. so may Allah God the sincere ones we want to tell you this isn't some sort of like political mogul 2.0 that we're trying to do here. This is just this yeah. to invite to you to investigate your scripture, as Brother okay. Hasan has said, as well as the Quran, the book of Allah. Yes. Um, okay. Brother uh, Hasmit, is there any uh, updates you want to mention? Any uh, thing coming up with your activity in Dawah in Malaysia? Any message you want to send 
out there yeah. to the Muslim brothers and sisters as well, again, to uh, the Sikh people in general? Yeah, so uh, I'll be coming up with more uh, classes on uh, doing da'wah and uh, explaining the explaining the deen of, uh, of Islam, right? Because the thing is, if you don't know Islam, how are you going to do da'wah? Right? The, most what happened is that they go and read. They go and read the uh, the Christian scriptures, or they listen to uh, Sheikh Ahmad Dida, They listen to Zakir Naik, and they uh, memorize these things, and then they copy paste it, and they go and have arguments. Okay, fine. That, I mean, I'm not saying that's wrong, but what if someone says, okay, fine. You know what? A Christian says, okay, fine. Take away Christianity is not right. What can Islam provide me? And you don't know anything about Islam. How are you gonna? How are you then gonna give him Islam, right? So you you don't have to copy paste and see what Ahmad Didat has uh, said. What is his argument? What is Zakir Knight's argument? Because all the argument that they have came from the Quran and from the Hadith. So go and read the Quran. Go read the Hadith. Know the know the uh, the, the, the the topics. Know what Allah talks about, right? And inshallah, Allah, you will be able to defend Islam. You'll be able to defend Islam. For example, uh, one very famous verse: "Go out and kill all the non-Muslims, all the non-believers." Right? And and this, this is a claim that we say, "Oh, look at this." Allah is saying, "If you if you're a non-believer, go and kill kill. You, you should be dead. You should, you should kill him." Well, no. Why don't you read the whole passage? And you need to know what was the situation in. Right? Let me just explain this to, uh, to, to, to Christians or to Sikh or to Hindus or to anybody who's non-Muslim and don't understand. The Quran didn't come down as a book, boom, one time. It came down over a period of 23 years, right? And it came down uh, in, in certain situations. Now, for this situation, the Prophet was being prosecuted, right? And the Quraysh, the, 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 uh, the enemies of the Prophet was coming to kill him. Okay, so they were the non-believers, a group of non-believers in, in Saudi Arabia, they were coming to kill him, right? So Allah decreed to, 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 to defend themselves, you are allowed to kill them, okay? It's not for the global society of non-believers, okay? Because there is another explanation that Allah gives in the Quran for the global uh, society of non-believers and Allah actually names it the surah the surah non-believers al-kafirun right so for the global Allah says lakum binukum waliyadi to you be your your belief and to me be my belief so it's very clear that's why the thing is read the Quran read the Quran read the Quran as a Muslim uh, as an Islam uh, learned Islam uh, and, and, and you, you will see things very clearly you see things very clearly. All these claims that you're listening and people are making has nothing against you. They can't prove anything because Islam, when you read the Quran, read the Hadith, it gives you the proper explanation. It gives you logic. I mean, if someone's going to come and kill your family, are you just going to sit down there and give your other chick? Because that would be, that would be an insult to what the intelligence that God has given to you. You have to defend yourself. You have to defend your family, right? You will fight and you have to, if you have to kill them, you'll kill because you have to defend your family. You're not going to turn your other cheek. No the way. Th the thing is what I always say, even in, in the law, in the American law, for example, in many states, if, if a thief uh, walked into your house and you have a gun, it is, you're permitted to actually defend yourself, use that gun. So even in today, in 21st century today, these things are happening. So any any logical person wouldn't have issue with the idea of defending yourself. If you're being oppressed, getting kicked out of your yeah. homes, and you have to migrate somewhere else, your wealth has been taken away from you, some of fam family members are being tortured or getting killed. The Sahab actually wanted to fight. But yeah. the Prophet ﷺ didn't until the wahi, the revelation came to yeah. fight back. We have brother Abdul Qadir. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Can you unmute your mic? 
Yeah, yeah. Alaikum salam rahmatullah. Uh, brother Khalil, uh, Jazakallah khair. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to include that. Uh, I'm calling from Melbourne, Australia. Mashallah. Mashallah. Uh, what time is it over there? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, 11 30 a.m. Tuesday. Oh, wow. Mashallah. Oh, I, yeah, one day. I still haven't prayed the Isha on Monday. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we have two hours to go for Dhuhr, inshallah. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you and uh, all Jesus the guests Allah there, Allah. all the listeners, inshallah. Uh, mashallah, Brother Khalil, you are doing a good job, mashallah. And uh, Brother Smith, uh, mashallah, and uh, well, it's not my right to say welcome. Allah gives the hidayah and you are there. And uh, it's not a welcome. It's not my job to say welcome. Welcome yeah, back. Yeah, praise Allah. Inshallah, Allah barak fi. Uh, Brother Samit, uh, can I ask you something? I've heard a long time ago from uh, a Sikh brother, and uh, there is a, a caste system, not like in the Hindu way, but there is hierarchy in uh, people. Is that true? And if it is, can you tell us the hierarchy, who is the top and who is the bottom? Yeah. So you get my question, inshallah? Yeah, uh, inshallah. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, there is a caste system, uh, and, it, and it's based on um, whether you have land, right, uh, or you don't have land. So, I, uh, my, my father's side comes from the, uh, the child, the child, you see, the last, my last uh, surname, child family, right? And uh, that's because uh, my grandfather, he had uh, land, he had prestige in India. So he's from the uh, the top or the highest caste, uh, which is called the Maje, the Maje uh, caste, right? Now you have the Taiwal caste, which are farmers, right? So they're below. And then you have uh, the lawns who worked for the farmers. So that's the caste system, right? That is very straightforward caste system. And uh, what happens is even today in Malaysia, you have the, the Maje, they have their own temple, their own Gurdwara, okay? Where uh, the, the other caste, they don't, uh, they, if they come to this temple and pray, uh, they will start to make noise. They'll say like, oh no, you should go to your own temple because this is uh, our temple, you know? Uh, it's, not, it's not yours. You, you have to go to your own temple. That's your caste system and this and that. So you can see that what, what is happening? God is one. And they are putting caste systems and like, oh, you, you, this, is, this is yours because you are a farmer. Uh, this is mine because I'm a millionaire. Allah is not, Allah, not going to care about that. Allah is not going to care about oh, how much money you got. How, how many trillion of money you have. Allah is not uh, impressed by all that. <laughs> Allah gave you that. Why should he be impressed by that? Right. It's your it's your dean and what you have to do. So yeah, so that's the caste system, I think. Uh, just uh, yeah, for a follow up uh, a question is uh, related. Uh, now the Hindus they have the caste system. The what's the bottom part? The untouchables. The Hindus, yeah, they have yeah, a caste yeah, system. But, uh, I I don't think you have it in uh, see the untouchables. Mm -hmm. Uh, the is there intermarriage between the caste, the upper oh. caste getting married to the lower one and things like that, like well, uh, yeah, well, Hinduism, well, right? I think. Or is it, is it yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, well, that's, now, that's uh, do, do you have it? Like uh, the the upper class can get married to the lower uh, with the lower caste. Okay. In uh, so, in Sikhism. Thank yeah, you, Jazakallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So in the scripture itself, it's not written. Okay, there is no separation in the scripture. In the in the sixth scripture itself, it's uh, very clear and very uh, blunt when it, when it mentions uh, all human beings are the same. Okay, there is no uh, uh, one is not superior than the other. But through the teachings of the culture, yes, they have it. Uh, the the rich. Can't marry the poor, right? The uh, a, a a person who owns the land is not allowed to marry a, a a daughter or a son of a person who's working as a farmer. But uh, this is cultural. This is not 
from the scripture. This is cultural. So you can see the, the as time goes by, Sikhism is taken over by culture rather than by their own scripture itself. So this is why I always say that go and read your Guru Granth Sahib and read the Quran. Because what you are having right now is culture. Inshallah. Yeah, uh, yes, it's the same like uh, in all uh, religions, uh, even uh, in Islam, in our culture, we have uh, the, the culture dominates, which is really, really wrong. The culture dominates the real uh, teachings of Islam. And uh, I don't know if uh, I have to say it. Uh, some people, they stick with their madhab. Okay, if that is from this madhab, then uh, don't go there. And no, nothing says. If you ask them, uh, what was the madhab of the Prophet Sallallahu No one can tell he was Shafi or Hanafi or this. Yeah. But we, the weak people, bring that to affect our teachings. Mm. Inshallah, uh, I'm done, I think. Jazakallah khair, uh, Jazakallah khair, uh, Khalil and uh, Smith, inshallah. Well done. Well done, good job. Inshallah, Allah barakatuh. Alaykum as-salam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to share one uh, a, a, a kind of a uh, comedic story when I converted, when I accepted Islam. So uh, this is the first time that I was praying, right? And I was in the South, right? Now, I understand if someone says, Assalamu alaikum, you answer back, Wa alaikum salam. And we was the Aktahiyat uh, Akhir, the end Aktahiyat, right? And you reach Tahiyatul uh, Murakatus, right? And then you say, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Tika. So, so, so I was in the South and it was, uh, we were praying and the, and the guy said Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and I said wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah <laughs> Both of our, uh, our prayers were uh, of course batal because uh, I didn't know that uh, that it was actually uh, giving salam to the angels So that was funny for, for me that was uh, like really Wait, so you give it to someone else salam? Like to, to people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mashallah, that's a good one <laughs> Yeah. So, so if you buy yourself at home, it'll be crazy if you do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not funny. So, being in the masjid, the masjid, the masjid, you finished? Yeah. Allahu Allah. 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 That's funny. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Allah. 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 Okay, I think uh, brother Ramzi is here. Our Palestinian brother. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Mm. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you guys doing? Alhamdulillah. Okay, how are you? Alhamdulillah, all is well. Loving this conversation. I just wanted to reiterate something that was said. You know, unfortunately, yep. when people read the Quran or the Hadith, they think the Quran was revealed in a vacuum. Yani, okay, the for you know when the Quran says something, it's like the Prophet Sallallahu or when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi like said something in the Hadith. You know, he was just sitting down, sipping his tea, and then decided to say, "Oh, by the way, uh, we need to do this, or we need to say that, or we need to," you know. It's, and subhanAllah, like the, the level of intellect people lose when they when they criticize Islam. When but yani, this is something that actually increases my iman is when we defend our deen, we're doing it from a basis of logic and perspective. Whereas when people attack the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do it by blocking out their um very you know, I mean when people it's like like I said, the Quran was not revealed in a vacuum, you know, when the Quran says do this or say that or go here, you know. Or when the, when the Prophet Sallallahu said things, it wasn't like like I said, the Prophet didn't just wasn't sipping his tea and said this, or you know he just woke he, he just got up from bed. Oh, by the way, guys, we have to do that. Come on, you know. That's why people, I, they don't read asbab un nuzul. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. reason for reveal, for why things were revealed. And that's yeah, a good point, Ramzi. You made a very good point, bro. Like it's not like and brother Hasmid made that earlier as well. It's not like it's just a book that was dropped and okay, let's do this. No, there's reasons why things are revealed. And they were supposed to be as ibra for us in the future to learn from the stories. For example, what happened in Mecca, what happened with the people of Quraysh, as well as the ahkam that are always valid, aside from the things that we're just supposed to learn as allegory. And I just wanted because, uh, like, I don't imagine, for example, when the Quran tells the Muslims to fight, defend themselves, you know, to fight the to, to fight the mushrikeen. I don't imagine the Prophet ﷺ was walking around knocking on people's doors. <laughs> Hey, we have to go uh, fight the mushrikeen. I'm pretty sure something was happening at the time, but yeah, it's just the level how people. It's it's, it's almost funny how people forget to make to 
how do I say it? People forget to go through this thought process. Very simple thought process. I mean, one, if we were to apply this to any other situation, people would, you know, but subhanAllah, when people criticize Islam, when they hear negative things about Islam, for many people, unfortunately, these things just don't click. And that's why Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, Yani, with um, an intellect, with reasoning, with rationality. Alhamdulillah, and that's just all I wanted to say. MashaAllah, barakallah fiqh, akhir ramzi. Those are excellent points. Jazakallah khair for uh, uh, oh, yeah. emphasizing on them. Thank you. 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 It happened. I remember doing funny. It happens. I remember doing funny stuff when I reverted. Yeah. And then he says, "What do you say? Walk into the mosque with my shoes and praying with my shoes on me." Yeah. Walk in, in the mosque and almost praying with my shoes on. Subhanallah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. That's a, it was. It was. It was very fun for the uh, the early days of uh, me learning Islam. Right. Uh, a lot of memories. A lot of. Uh, Fun memories because um, I remember uh, I remember playing uh, after Asar. So you so you normally have uh, two rakats of Sunnah, right? Where you pray before and after. So before Fajar and after Fajar, uh, before Zuhur and after Zuhur, uh, before Asar and after Asar you don't have you don't have right you don't have. No. But I was praying. I was praying. I was praying Zuna, and 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 the, and the Ustak said like, uh, what what uh, what were you doing? Were you doing a Khadar uh, for uh, Fajar or something? I said no. I was doing I was doing uh, Sunnah prayer. I said oh no, that's not Sunnah prayer. After Asar, that's not Sunnah prayer. After Asar, I said oh okay, fine. So uh, and one one of the other things is uh, I was I was rushing. One of the time of rushing and uh, Fajar and time was almost gonna finish for Fajar. So uh, I did Fajr prayers without the uh, du'a kunit, without the du'a kunit. And uh, someone, Malaysian, born Malay, he didn't even let me finish my prayers. He caught me by, by, by his shirt and he pulled me out and brought me to Ustad and said, uh, this guy is praying wrongly. How, what? So, so the Ustad asked, like, well, how, what? He said, didn't do the Doha Kunut, that's all. Doha Kunut is a Sunnah. It's not a compulsory. And then the, the, the Ustad said, yeah, Doha Kunut is uh, it's not compulsory. I mean, it's one of the most important Sunnah, but yeah, it's, it's not compulsory. And then he was like embarrassed and he was like, oh, sorry, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, cool, man. Now, 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 now you didn't, did not let me finish my father and now... Time is over for Fajr, and I have to do, uh, I have to go out early. <laughs> so, a lot of funny things. Yeah. It's amazing. Some of the brothers and sisters mentioning that uh, about uh, praying with the shoes, how it uh, is accepted, acceptable, and also it's, uh, even Sunnah. Yes, the situation here, however, was walking to the masjid <laughs> with your shoes yes. on, and the brother saying that he forgot he, and he walked into the masjid with, with, with the shoes on. Mm-hmm. But yes, those are those are excellent points by all the brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, Smith, man, I can't get enough, man. It's always first of all, it's always good to hear a river story. Always good. Allah, it's amazing. And in addition to that, to get a perspective from someone who was Sikh to understand a little bit about Sikhism, the concept of God, how did they view the idea of prophethood? What do they whether they believe in Prophet Muhammad or not? Whether they were supposed to? What did the founder of this religion say about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And uh, this is amazing, Akhi. So this is a, hopefully uh, a good introductory. Um, what should I say? No, it's not a course, but a little definitions about the idea of God, pantheism, and their view, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, for everyone who's watching to hopefully have some, uh, I guess, pre. Uh, 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 information or knowledge that come from you, Jazakallah Khair for that, so we can be able to have a comfortable conversation with anybody yeah. from uh, who's who's identified as Sikh to at least be able to to to, to, to you can have something to talk about, which is the idea of God. We will believe in the same God, you know. Yes. Your guru mentioned uh, to follow if you want to know the truth, seek the truth to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These these are important, Akhi. 
I think in the conversation. Yeah. I think just Very knowing important. this for now, you know, obviously we're not we don't know too much, we're not deep into understanding Sikhism, but just knowing for now, honestly, it makes me more comfortable than a couple of hours ago when I started the conversation. Because there's so much we learned that it's easier to start the conversation and we can take it to the next level. So for that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you uh, for all this time that you put in. And Jazakallah khairan for being with us, brother. It's always a privilege and pleasure to talk to you. Uh, if there's inshallah anything else in, going on in Malaysia, any course or any da'wah uh, uh, platform, let me know inshallah like, like just you did last time. And it will be yep. happy to join and share whatever little bit that we're still learning. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all. Um, any final statement you want to mention or say to everybody who's watching today? Yeah, so one last final st statement. See, uh, every day in your life, go out and talk to at least one person, whether it's a Muslim or non-Muslim, about the truth of Islam. Just do that, inshallah. Because we need to, we need, we need to, we, we need to uh, uh, get rid of this uh, false accusation about the Prophet of Islam, about the Quran, about Allah. We need to get rid of this. And if we, the Muslims, if we are just going to sit down and say, ah, you know what, I don't want to get into that, then uh, you know, well, just think about it. When you in Judgment Day, when Allah asks you. Why did you not defend the deen? Are you going to say, oh no, you know what Allah, I didn't want it to get into it. Mm. <laughs> are, you going to, are you going to say that to Allah? <laughs> I thought it was, I didn't want to get into it. Okay, fine, you didn't want to get into it. Uh, okay, I'll put you into something else then, <laughs> other than Jannah. Subhanallah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good advice, Akhi. You know, the bare minimum, you know, this conversation should be open, especially in this day and age. People are really misinformed about Islam. Wallahi, even people that claim that they know, they, they're they really misinformed about Islam. It's amazing how some people still think that you know, Allah is some Arab moon god. Can you imagine? Some yeah. people still today, in, in this age, they still believe this. You know, they don't, some people don't even know that Jesus himself used the term Allah or Allah to refer to mm. He's the God, our God, God the only yeah. God. It's a, can you imagine? Sometimes when I tell people this, they honestly look at me like I have three heads. They look at me like, what? <laughs> and, then, and then immediately doubt comes in. I'm like, don't believe me. Go, you Google it. You look it up. So this yeah. basic simple facts that Allah is whom your God, whom you call God, has worshipped. That one is whom we worship. Subhanallah al-Adim. Um, these basic things. And, and anyone can talk about this. Just mention that. SubhanAllah, anything like Brother Smith say, you know, make it a habit to talk about these things. It is your duty as a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all, all our viewers. And uh, bless Brother Smith for his time. Uh, he prayed Fajr basically and jumped in through the podcast. Uh, so may Allah reward you for your time, Akhi. Uh, I think with that, we're going to conclude it here, inshallah. We're we'll going to stay in touch, inshallah. I dropped my, uh, my Twitter there uh, for people who are on Twitter. Where I have the article that I, uh, in the book, sorry, the Arabs in history, what I quoted earlier for anybody who wants to reference. That's my um, Twitter account. And your again, your Facebook account, brother, is here. Hasmi. Yeah, H A S. Mm -hmm. H A S M E E T C H A A L. Hasmi Chal. Yeah. Uh, so I just posted it right now, too, for the brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted to check you out, inshallah, on Facebook. I'm going to have put it on the screen. Mm, and yeah. I conclude, inshallah, uh, Thank you all for watching, for staying late with us. Jazakumullah khairan. I will see you, inshallah, and rahim on the next podcast. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, brother Smith. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah.